Hi, my name is Danielle Dockery. Earlier I was speaking to you about a technique called photoelasticity, which involved making a model of a structure and then deforming that particular model and figuring out what the surface strains are or the strains through the thickness of that part actually are and comparing that to a real world structure. But in today's market, most people want to know what's happening on their test article, not a model thereof. And so we use a different technique called photostress. And photostress allows us to make an optically sensitive sheet that coats the entire surface of the structure that we're trying to measure. And once we coat that part, we can put it under loads by squeezing and pushing, twisting and turning. And those loads will be optically seen on the surface of the actual part. And they will be directly proportional to the surface strains that are happening underneath the coating itself. So whether you're working on a flat surface where flat sheets can be used, as seen here, or if you're working on a contourable surface like the grips that we're holding, or even this casting, you can use the optically sensitive material and coat it, the structure itself, bond the optically sensitive material to that structure, and then from there you can deform the part and follow the strains as they occur. Making this optically sensitive sheet material is very easy. You simply mix two, a two-part epoxy together, pour it into a dam. When the sheet reaches a certain pliability, you can lift it off of the surface of the casting surface and then apply it directly to your test piece like we see here. So with PhotoStress, you're really creating your own custom strain gauge that can match the topography of the test piece that you're actually trying to test. So in this case, you can see this clear sheet that we have contoured to match the shape of this cover, this oil cover. Now we can take that clear sheet, once it's a solid structure, bond it to the surface of the part using an optically reflective material the material itself will have aluminum powder dispensed in the matrix to create a nice reflective surface. We pass light through the surface of the part, through the coating. It bounces off of this nice reflective backing and comes back out to our instrumentation. When it makes it to the instrumentation, we're able to see all of the surface strains that are taking place on the part itself. We can also do residual stress measurements with this technique. In fact, I've got a part here that has been welded, and this is the welded area. To get to the residual stresses, we simply need to section the part, which we have done. Part two of this is here, and we cut right through the middle to relieve any residual stresses that might have been created from the weld. The photostress technique would then show us, through this optical sheet, how much stress was actually there after the weld was done. So we can do static testing, we can do dynamic testing uh, or quasi-dynamic testing, but if you get into a scenario where you want to do some type of cyclic dynamic testing, such as a rotating part or a blade that is moving up and down in a reciprocating manner, then we move away from our standard system to our um, high-speed monitoring technique, which is a strobe that comes into play to show us what happens in a dynamic event. The strobe would then follow the oscillations of the test piece and then with a little synchronization effort we can actually match the rotational speed of a part and then analyze it as if it were a static structure. So in the next step I'm actually going to take a fan blade and put it into the field of view so that we can all see what happens when that fan blade is put under a load due to centripetal forces and then we're going to come back and look at the strain field produced by this rotating part.